let's talk about the fact that Cassandra is a distributed database. In a distributed database, rather than being constrained to having to fit all of the data onto only one server, the database can be spread across multiple servers, allowing for massive horizontal scalability. In Cassandra, we call a network group of nodes, which in effect are servers, a cluster. Within a cluster, there are no master or slave nodes. Each node has the same functionality as the others, which combined with replication, which we'll be learning about shortly, allows for a distributed database with no single point of failure. In addition, a Cassandra cluster can easily be spread across more than one data center, allowing for data availability, even if one data center completely goes down. Let's now go take a look at documentation that's available on Cassandra's architecture. So if you'd like to follow along with me, I'm gonna to go to a browser and in the address bar, enter www.datastacks.com slash docs. That should take you to this page here. Datastacks is a company that is heavily involved in the Cassandra community. Datastacks offers an enterprise version of Cassandra, as well as professional services, as well as documentation. Let's scroll down to see the types of documentation that are available. If we go down to the common task category and look under general, we see Cassandra architecture, which is what we're looking for right now. Let's go ahead and click on that link. And we're here on the landing page for architecture in brief, which provides us with an overview of Cassandra's architecture. In addition, over on the left, we see various related topics, which we'll be learning about, such as gossip, data distribution and replication, partitioners, snitches. I encourage you to take a moment and browse through these topics to see the sorts of things we're gonna be learning about as we go forward.